ABS, TCS, ASM, counter steering assistance, auto drive. That's just a small sample of the assist available to you in Gran Turismo Sport. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into all of them so you know not only what they do, but how they affect your lap times. First up is the low fuel indicator. This one's pretty simple. It pops up on screen when you are low on fuel and if you see it, it's probably a good idea to pit pretty soon. This assist is fine to leave on, it might even save you from time to time when you are spacing out and have forgotten all about pitting. Not that I've ever done that. The brake indicator is another red warning that pops up on screen telling you when to brake. It seems useful till you realize it appears way too early and conversely sometimes doesn't appear at all when it really should. Leave this one off. You won't learn anything valuable by waiting for the message to tell you when to brake. The driving line assist presents you with three options and you can choose any or all of them. Starting with the driving line, that dashed yellow line on the track is meant to show you the optimal racing line to take and it's decent in its job. The cone markers and corner markers are almost the same thing. Almost. Apart from the obvious visual differences like a traffic cone being a traffic cone, there is one important functional difference. Both mark corners by showing you where to position the car on entry, apex and exit, but cone markers will also warn you when to slow down for a slow corner. Note the double cones and lack of a blue corner marker here. This is a warning that the approaching turn is tighter than it looks and you might want to slow down more than usual, which is good advice for the Nürburgring really. All these are generally harmless and won't really slow you down, but relying on them might hinder you learning the track on your own. Knowledge you could need online if these assists are turned off for an event. Auto drive is where things start getting real. And by real I mean totally unrealistic assists that only exist in games. Though come to think of it, maybe a Tesla can auto drive to some extent. Anyway, auto drive is almost what you'd expect, the game driving for you. There are two options to choose from here, auto braking and auto braking plus auto steering. Either way though, auto drive just feels weird. It brakes way too early and has you crawling through corners. The auto steering feels completely disconnected too. You are driving with immense lag between your inputs and the car responding. Here you are on board with auto drive set to off. The ghost is the best time with auto drive on. Even after waiting a little at the line for the ghost to get ahead, it's still a breeze to sail past and take the win. Don't even bother with this one. And if you're watching this channel, I doubt you would anyway. Where assists do start to get interesting to some drivers is Active Stability Management, henceforth ASM. This is an assist that was used a lot online in previous GT games and it wouldn't surprise me to hear about players using it again in GT Sport. The question is then, should you be using it? No, just no. <laughs> Let me explain. What you are seeing here is the run on the left using ASM and the run on the right turning it off. Watch for the little white circle with a triangle at the bottom of the screen turning red when ASM is kicking in. What ASM does is to apply braking force to the wheels in an all-out effort to prevent sliding of the car. This sounds okay at first, usually in racing if a car is sliding then you are losing lap time. The problem is that you need the car to slide a little. Without that slide the car is difficult to make turn into a corner and just as difficult to get it out again. Closely watch the footage on the left and you will see that the car is a lot straighter and note that I need to wait longer to be able to accelerate, as I know the car will just understeer instead of bringing the rear around to help me through the corner. In the end this shows on the clock too as the ASM off run was over one second a lap faster. That's another assist you want to be turning off, but counter steering assistance, maybe that's the ticket. This one really surprised me. If I'm good at anything in racing, I would have thought it would be controlling a heavy powerful car with street tires in the wet. I was going to smash my counter steering assisted time so easily. Then I just didn't. What you're seeing here is the counter steer assist off run with the ghost of my best time after 7 laps with counter steering assist turned on. The first part of the lap is grippy and mostly dry and I pull a nice lead over the cheating ghost. But as soon as the track gets wet, the tables turn. The issue isn't the speed able to be achieved by either car, it's a matter of skill. The Supra on CS tires in the rain is really tricky. I was simply more consistent in the high speed wet sections with counter steering assistance turned on. The best way to think about it is this. The key to speed not only in wet conditions but in all conditions is keeping the car on the very edge of grip. 
You go over that edge and you are losing time and this is when counter steering assistance is there to pull you right back. But I was still surprised. Maybe counter steering assistance is being benefited by the wet conditions. Well, this is Sakuba. Totally dry on racing tires with plenty of grip. I did 10 laps in the Alpha 4C GR4 with counter steering assistance turned off before trying to beat that time with it turned on. It took all of about 2 laps for me to match my time with counter steering assistance on. I have to say that if you turn this on then you aren't going to be much slower and you might even be more consistent. Personally though, there's still no chance I would use it. It makes the steering feel strange when it kicks in and it generally breaks a sense of immersion. The final two assists are the big hitters and the only two assists that real cars actually have. ABS replicates a car's anti-lock braking system and comes in three flavors, default, weak and off. The names used here are really confusing because what is default? What is weak? The simplest way to test braking power is to build up speed on a long straight and then to slam on the brakes. On the left is ABS default, middle ABS weak and right is ABS off. As you can see there is nothing between ABS default and weak, but off is sailing right past the mark. But not by as much as you would have expected. In a race though you don't always break in a straight line, you break while turning. Is that going to make a difference? To find out we are on board with ABS set to weak and the ghost car is the best time using ABS default. If we look turn by turn we can see that there is nothing in it in terms of lap time. My best times in each were so close that it was obvious that any variation in lap time was just down to my driving rather than the brakes. The difference in feeling though was more pronounced. The weak setting allows the tyres to lock up just a little bit more than the default setting which can feel nicer to drive, the car certainly moves more under braking. But as we experienced with other assists, if you are driving well then ABS is going to kick in less and in terms of absolute lap time it's not going to matter much whether you are on default or weak. And this also dictates the verdict on ABS off. I didn't spend a huge amount of time doing laps with ABS off because the outcome is pretty obvious. ABS off can be just as fast as ABS weak or default, but it's much much harder to get right. ABS weak is slightly more difficult than ABS default, but ABS off is much more difficult than either. In the end, if you can manage to absolutely nail every single braking zone with ABS off, you can be just as fast, if not faster, than the other two ABS options. <laughs> but good luck with that one. Finally, we get to the big one, TCS. To test, we are at the Red Bull ring in full wet conditions running comfort hard tires. It doesn't get much more challenging than this, and if track control is going to be a benefit to lap times anywhere, we're certainly going to see it right here. First up is the run with the maximum TCS setting of 5. It's not too bad. You can see the angry red TCS icon turning on a lot, especially on corner exit, and the car is a little more prone to understeer than I would like. But in these conditions it doesn't feel too slow. Crossing the line we put up a lap time of 1 10.6 seconds. Next up is the minimum working TCS setting of 1. And as you can see it lets the wheels spin a lot more than TCS 5. Who knew? Through the corners, the car is a little more lively, taking more skill to control, but the best lap is set on lap 3, which by this point the car and track were well known and by lap 10 the best time hadn't improved. So that's a 110.3 as we cross the line, a few tenths faster than with TCS 5. The TCS off run then. I smashed it right? Like a second quicker. Just like the counter steering test, I thought I would smash the TCS times with TCS off. And initially this looked quite good. I crossed the line with a sub 110 time and felt good about it. Till I looked at my best combined sector times and potential best laps. They are nearly identical for the TCS1 and the TCS off runs. Turns out at least with this car combination my right foot is no better than the AI. But why is this? TCS works by reducing throttle input, in many cases it should slow you down, and indeed it does, but the key is when and where it slows you down. Here on the left is my best run with TCS1, on the right is the best run with TCS set to 5. Watch those little red TCS icons at the bottom. With TCS set to 1 it activates mainly mid corner and when off throttle. These are times when stability is key. A little TCS here won't hurt your lap times, it might even improve them. But on the right, it's going off all the time, sometimes even on the straights. I'm getting slower runs out of corners with TCS 5 and this shows in the final lap time. 
The conclusion is that as long as you are keeping the car in control, a little TCS isn't going to hurt you, as most of the time it won't even be on. Just don't turn it up too much. Think of the TCS scale as a sensitivity switch. You want it only to come on when you need it to catch a spin, otherwise you don't want to know about it. Personally, I leave it on zero always, except for the start of a race when it can be really useful just to get you off the line. But if you're still working on your throttle control, a low TCS setting isn't a big deal. Just don't crank it up. And there you have it, all of GT Sports assists laid out and frankly I'm a little surprised I thought I was always going to be faster with the assist turned off. Turns out that ain't necessarily so. If you enjoy this type of breakdown then check out our video on manual versus auto shifting here. Or if you are hanging for Gran Turismo 7 like I am then check out this video detailing what GT7 needs to deliver right here.